Let's talk about modern taxonomy and the use of Latin in scientific naming. In 1758, an important book was written, System of Naturae, uh, by the author Carolus Linnaeus. His real name was Carl von Linn. You'll notice something about both the name of the book and the, the name of the author. Uh, they were written in a Latin form. This is not unusual during the time and the centuries preceding the publication of this book. At that time, Latin, and to some extent Greek, uh, were used throughout the world as the language of scholars. If you were going to read a book, if you were going to write a book, it needed to be in Latin. This comes forth from primarily the Catholic Church's influence and the establishment of monasteries, which also served as libraries and collectors of knowledge throughout the Middle Ages. <coughs> so there's a long history of scholarship using Latin as a language to be understood. So Carl von Linn, when he was going to uh, announce his way of doing things relative to naming organisms, he of course wrote in Latin, and he translated his name into Latin. He himself, Carl von Linn, was a minister, a physician, and a natural historian from Sweden. He saw it as his duty to fulfill parts of the Bible from the standpoint of continuing what he viewed as Adam's work of naming all living things but doing it in a scientific manner. So you see there's a, a cross purposes here of religion and science with Carl von Linn. <clears throat> he invented a concept we call binomial nomenclature, which basically just means a two name, binomial, way of naming things, nomenclature. This two, way na two name way of naming things involved what we call a genus and a species. You can also kind of remember these somewhat from the idea that genus is like a general name and species is like a specific name. I've got some examples here of scientific names. Uh, Homo sapiens, that's us, Canis latrans, and Canis familiaris. <coughs> There's several things to notice about these names. Uh, one is the genus name is always capitalized. The reason for that is genera, the plural for genus, uh, are always in the form of Latin nouns. And all Latin nouns are capitalized. This is a little different from English. We capitalize names, but nouns are not capitalized. But in Latin, they are capitalized. All of the species names are not capitalized. That's because these are all adjectives, descriptive of the noun. Also, I want to point out, and this is a problem students sometimes have, species is both singular and plural. If you take the S off and say species, you're talking about a kind of coin. But if you're talking about one species or 20 species, it all has the same form. The other thing to notice about the binomials and the format, capital, genus, lowercase, species, and both are underlined. There's a reason for this. In typesetting, to underline a word says to set it in italics to show that it is a foreign language. It's italicized. So this indicates that if this was in print, it would be italicized. This is a foreign language. It's Latin. It's a dead language now, but it is a foreign language. <coughs> you'll have a little problem with this. In this class, you'll be able to show scientific names with a capital genus and a lowercase species. But you will not be able to show the underline in the posting boxes that we have on our course website. So I will kind of forgive you that as long as you follow the capitalization rules. Now let's look at the meaning behind these. Homo means man. It's the noun man or human being. Canis means dog in Latin. And so these are humans. These are dogs. 
sapiens means wise, so wise man. We may disagree with that a little bit. Latrans and familiaris tell us something about what kind of dog we're dealing with here. Latrans means of the prairie, of the grasslands. Familiaris means of the family. So you would literally translate these into prairie dog and family dog. Well, you'd be okay on the family dog, but prairie dogs is actually a name we have for a rodent. It's a large ground squirrel out in the American West. This Canis latrans prairie dog is the coyote. Let's stop there and then we'll go on to look at the importance of using Latin across languages for sciences scientists in naming particular kinds of organisms.